Well, establish a seat. <clears throat> I have to say that I find it incredibly interesting, and I know we discussed this last year as well, how well the Dharma talks that I plan the previous year have aligned with what's going on. And that's kind of creepy, and I don't do it on purpose, but also I'm probably just drawing from what's happening and aligning it with what I talk about. But um, I'm sure you've noticed that this week, with our focus being on the idea of buddhi and the higher mind, and thinking about that like collective consciousness and how what we are doing affects the world around us, how nicely that aligns with the messages that we're getting from the world around us. Uh, or at least from the, the intellectuals and the scientists and the doctors who are telling us uh, to be more responsible with our behaviors. So as we finish this discussion this week, if, if there's nothing else I leave you uh, with as we finish this study of Ein and this sound vibration of uh, connecting with Sarsvati, so our, our god, the goddess that represents um, learning, knowledge, and creativity and then as we um, shift our attention shift our focus shift our uh, perspective from serving or not serving moving through the world based on manas and and if we just to dive a little more into manas manas is like the aspect the the layer of our mind that is served by and acts through sensory perception. So if we connect that back to when we talked about prakruti, remember how we talked about the gunas and we talked about our own dosha and we talked about raja and kapha and pitta and vata and uh, pitta and um, sattva. So that's manas. Manas is constantly responding to and acting based upon those qualities and what we're trying to do is use this practice of I'm of making this sound vibration in order to recognize that that's not how we should be interacting with the world instead we should be looking at that information from a discerning perspective and instead approaching the world from booty from the higher discerning intellectual mind and saying I understand all this is going on, there's this rajasic energy in the world, and I'm stuck in this topic, tamasic place, right? If we think about how our lives are right now, we're, we're being forced into kapha, but everything else in the world is rajasic. Do you remember those two terms? And so the buddhi, the discerning mind, and the practice of I am helps us say, hey, let me step back. Let me look at everything that's going around and let me respond appropriately. Let me take the best action based on the knowledge I have, the learning I've done, and my own creativity in order to affect the whole. And whether that means drawing back, like we're doing, you know, pulling back and remaining focused upon ourselves for a little bit so that we're not putting a ripple out into the world, or whether it means reaching out in ways that are responsible. So for example, um, Yesterday, we made a donation to the um, uh, Coalition for the Homeless, right? Because there's a place that needs supplies and, and needs assistance without us um, infecting them, basically. So that's our practice. That's what he, and that's what I'm ultimately gets us to. So when we're focusing on Sarasati, it's not just, oh, let me learn, let me gain knowledge, let me create. It's also, how am I learning and gaining knowledge and expressing my creativity so that it benefits the whole. <laughs> okay. So, Dharma Talk makes sense. We've got that in our heads now, that philosophical focus. And uh, let's get our bodies moving a little bit. So, I suggest that we start in a table pose today. Let's take our blankets. If you're, I mean, if you're on a carpet, you don't necessarily need that extra tool. Uh, but of course I have my hardwood floors here, so I'm going to open up my blanket on my mat and place knees upon it and then come into a table pose with 
middle finger is forward and every other finger spread out from there. Shoulders over wrists and then adjust so that your knees are right beneath your hips. And let's close our eyes for a moment and just feel our fingers on the earth. So establish this posture, pressing left tip of thumb into the earth and then right fingertip and middle finger, fingertip, and then ring finger, and then pinky finger, and feel all your fingertips like a gecko's fingers sticking down to the ground. And then working from there, feel that little bend in your elbows so that you can feel you're muscularly supporting yourself rather than with your bones. And then your shoulder, slide your shoulder blades slightly towards your spine, thinking about those ladybug wings, squeezing them towards your spine. Lift up with your belly and then adjust your knees so that they're right beneath your hips and feel your thighs lifting up and your belly lifting up as you maintain this posture and then let your attention drift all the way back to your toes and feel all 10 toes working their way towards the earth and I know some of you are more and more aware of what's happening in your heels. Rotate your feet so that they're parallel, avoiding that relaxation or uh, reflexive relaxation that lets your heels roll outward or inward try to keep them in neutral and then as you breathe in next just come into cow we're going to hold cow for a few breaths so belly down tail up shoulders back gaze up and forward and just hold that cow for a couple breaths and as you retain this posture notice how it affects your breathing notice if there's any areas that feel particularly limited or tight and notice if anything changes in your hands, arms, shoulders, thighs, toes as you retain this posture. And take another breath and try to grip the earth, gecko fingers and try to keep those little bends in your elbows pointing them back towards your thighs and try to keep your shoulder blades moving towards your spine and your thighs lifting and all ten toes on the earth and your heels at neutral, and you're gonna go through that one more time in your mind without me telling you. And then we'll do the opposite. We'll round our backs into cat stretch, bringing chin to chest, sweeping your tailbone and sacrum forward. And then the same way, you're gonna establish that, those same little pieces that we did in our table toes, now in our cat stretch all your fingertips on the earth you've got those little bends in your elbows your shoulder blades now they're actually pulling apart like ladybug wings spreading wide your belly is still lifting your thighs are still lifting and again all ten toes on the earth and your heels at neutral take another breath and then come to a neutral stretch crown forward and tail back now let's try to divide that posture. Keep your hips in a neutral position. Bring your shoulders back and your gaze up so it's like you're creating the front portion of cow. Keep lifting through your belly, trying to keep your spine at neutral as you come into this like front half cow. And then breathe out, gaze down, neutral shoulders, neutral head, and do a back half cow. Tail up, belly down, but keep your chest at neutral, your arms at neutral. So we're just isolating these different parts of our body and becoming discerning about how we move through this posture. And then come to neutral, reset it, and then try it again. Chest forward and down, shoulders back and look up, but belly and hips stay at neutral. And then neutral shoulders and head, tail, hips move in and belly move into our half cow or half body cow. It's almost like you're dividing your body in half right at your solar plexus. It's funny how you can focus on that zone, right? And then neutral spine, tail back and crown forward. Hold there. And now we'll do the opposite, trying out our calf. So you're going to keep your low, your belly, your hips, your low body in neutral. And you're going to round your shoulders, bring your gaze towards your chest, and you're going around like a cat. But your <laughs> belly stays in neutral, your hips in neutral. 
And then bring your shoulders, your head to neutral, and then try the opposite. Tucking your sacrum forward, rounding your lower back, but your shoulders, your head, they stay in neutral. Take another breath. And then come to neutral spine. Check out your fingers. You still got those get-go fingers on the earth, or are you starting to weight down into the heels of your hands? Give yourself a moment. And then we'll do it again. Rounding chin to chest, separating shoulders, but belly stays in neutral, hips stay in neutral. Avoid that temptation around your low back. And then come to lengthening neutral spine through shoulders and head, and then do low body. Bringing your sacrum forward, rounding your low back, trying to keep shoulders and head at neutral. And then come into a neutral position and move back to child's pose. You can rotate your palms to face up, pushing your hips back and let your head come down to the ground. And just take a moment, notice how that feels to isolate those two different parts of your body and to try and move through that posture instead of as one singular movement, instead as two separate pieces. On your next inhale, look forward and turn your palms to the earth, and then come up into table again. And on your next breath in, lift your arms up to the sky and come to Bali. Seal. Hands overhead, stretching tall. All right, so now let's try that same movement, but let's do it now in Bali. Seal. So we don't have the earth and our hands to support us anymore. So first, let's go into a cow. Belly forward, chest forward, shoulders back, Lift your gaze, look to the sky. So you've got this big, beautiful arch going on, this big, effortful cow-like posture, or it would be a preparation for camel. And then breathe out, round, round, round everything. Bring your hands forward, chin to chest. Feel your tailbone sticking out behind you and curve your back really deeply. So you're rounding, rounding, rounding. And then inhale again, come into cow. Belly forward, chest upward. Shoulders back, gaze up to the sky. And then reverse it, cow again, rounding your spine, chin and the chest, arms forward, and feel your tailbone sweeping forward. And then inhale, come to neutral. Now let's split it in half again. Belly, hips in neutral, chest forward and upward, gaze up and bring your arms back. and then come to neutral and then try and do your low body. Hip back, create that big arc in your low back, but keep your chest and your shoulders at neutral. And then come to neutral spine, reset it, and then do it again. Shoulders back, arms back, lift your gaze, upper body, into our cow pose, keep your belly engaged, keep your hips at neutral, and then neutral spine. And then send your hips back, your belly forward, doing just your low body, trying to keep chest and shoulders in neutral. And then come to neutral spine. Now let's take a break because that's a lot of work. Bring your hands together and come down to sit in Virasana, our hero pose. Palms up, deep breath in. Exhale, and then again. And one more time. <clears throat> All right, so now we get to try it again, but this time we'll try our cat pose. Inhale, rise up, come into our Bali seal. And then as you exhale, round with your upper body, arms forward, upper chest back, but keep your hips and your belly at neutral. And then come to neutral upper body and then try it in your low body. Sweeping tail forward, belly drawing back to spine. Keep your shoulders and chest at neutral. And then come into neutral spine. And then do upper body again. Chin to chest, rounding upper back. Reaching a little bit forward, deep breath. Good. And then neutral spine and then do your low body. Belly back, sacrum forward. 
keeping arms and head at neutral. Take another breath. And then come to neutral spine and then come back and sit back down into Virasana. Palms up, shoulders back. Stay there. Deep breath in. Exhale and then take another. Exhale. All right, let's go back to table pose and grab a set of blocks and put a block underneath each one. And let's do lowest level with our blocks just to give ourselves a little extra height. And then as you inhale, lengthen up, come into Chaturanga, shoulders over wrists and heels over balls of feet. And as you breathe out, just bend your knees. And then on your next breath out, round like a big cat. Bend your elbows and bring your chest down towards the block. As you inhale, come into cow and lift up, keeping your toes how they were. And then exhale, round and come down. And then inhale, cow and come up. And then exhale, round and come down. Inhale, cow and come up. And then one more like this, round like cat and come down. And then into cow and come up. And then push back, hips towards heels, toes grabbing the ground, lengthen your legs and move back. Adho Mukha, Svanasana. And now look for length through both sides of your body. So create that lift that you get through cat as you bring your belly to your spine. Create that length that you feel through cow in your low back. Create that lift in your chest like cow. Uh, like cat, and then feel that length like cow through your shoulders. Take another breath. Exhale, and another. And one more. Now as we inhale, let's look up at our hands and breathing out. Start walking all the way up to the front. Come on down into forward fold. Inhale here. And exhale. Breathe in, let's put palms on chins and look forward. Breathe out, lifting your hips high, forward fold. Feel free to put palms on the block. And then inhale with big open arms, reach to the sky, bring your hands together and down to your heart. And then breathe again, big open arms up to the sky. Exhaling hands together down to our heart. And another breath, big open arms up to the sky and down to our heart. Inhaling, reaching all the way up to the sky. Exhaling down to heart. Now let's bring our hands up and overhead. And then as you breathe out, upper body opens like cow. Low body stays like cat. Belly drawing the spine sacrum forward. Upper body, chest forward, arms backward. Lift your gaze and tilt back, opening up. Try to avoid that temptation to stick your butt out or to swing your hips forward. Stay in a neutral position and keep bringing your shoulders back. Deep breath in, long exhale, take another. Exhale, and again. Exhale, one more time. And then come to neutral, arms release down. Deep breath there, exhale. Inhale, let's reach up to the sky. And then as you exhale, big open arms, lift hips, hinge and fold forward. Inhale here, lifting either onto fingertips or palms to chin. And then exhaling, bend your knees and bring your hands to the backs of your calves. Grab hold of your calves and hold on tight. Squeeze your elbows in towards your sides. And then lift your hips to the sky, rounding through your low back and trying your best to lengthen the backs of your legs. Inhale. Exhale. Take another breath, exhale, and again. Squeeze your elbows towards your thighs. Take another breath, and one more. And then bend your knees, release your hands, lift your hips, and lengthen into your forward fold. Deep breath in, long breath out. Let's inhale, hands up on the shins, look forward. Exhaling, bend your knees. You can move your blocks out of the way, root your palms, and then step your right foot all the way back. I have to adjust because my left foot was back a little bit beyond my hands. And what we want to do is get that big, long, lengthened posture like a high lunge, and then lower right knee down. So we've got our Ashwa Sanchalasana stance with right knee behind hips, 
and then breathe and reach up to the sky in this posture. Inhaling, arms rising high. And of course, we're looking for that neutral spot, the neutral spine. Deep breath in. Exhaling, your front knee over your front ankle and your back leg behind you. And then open up again into that big, beautiful arch. Lifting up through your sternum, your chest, your shoulders move back, your gaze rises, but your belly stays in that more neutral position. Like you're trying your best to create cow in your low body. I'm sorry, cat in your low body and cow in your upper body. Take another breath. And again. One more time. And then hands together, down in front of heart, neutral spine. Breathe in again, reach to the sky. And then exhale, open arms and release hands down either to the earth or I'm gonna bring those blocks back in because my legs still feel tight from all the work I'm doing. All right, tuck your toes under on your back foot and lift your back knee. You've got high lunge stance going on. And then we're going to lift our hips and lengthen front legs, but you're not moving backwards. So sometimes we do this version, but that's not the version we're doing. Instead, we're lifting our hips high as we lengthen our front leg and your back heel lifts really, really high as you hold this pose. Exhale, breathe again. And one more. And then as you breathe out, bend your front knee again and step back, left foot. Plank pose. You can get rid of the blocks if you want or you can keep your hands on the box. We're going to do the opposite of what we did before with our funky vinyasa. Knees down. And this time, we're going to drop like cow and then lift like cat. So again, you're gonna drop forward like cow, chest down, belly down, shoulders back, and then round like a cat to lift up. And do it again, drop like a cow. Doesn't sound very good. Exhale, <laughs> round like a cat. And then one more time, lower like a cow. And lift like a cat. And then push all the way back, toes grabbing the ground, and lengthen into Adho Mukha. Vanasana, our downward dog, and we'll hang out there, deep breath in, exhale. So all this work we're doing is to create almost like this wave experience through your back body, through your spine, and it's opening up all of the shumanati, or I guess opening up isn't the right word, like clearing or moving prana, so that it can go through shushumna. So we're affecting both sides equally, and we're also intentionally moving our body really focusing on these tiny subtle little movements. Inhale, look up at your hands, and exhale, take your right foot all the way forward. Lower your left knee down, so you've got the Ashwasan, Talasana, or equestrian posture stance, and then breathe and then reach up to your side. Again, we're keeping front knee over ankle, back knee behind, and you're looking to stack shoulders over hips. Deep breath, hold it there. And again, and now upper body cow, lower body cat. Breathe, feel your chest lift, your gaze up, your shoulders back, your belly to your spine, and your sacrum drawing forward. And if you're enjoying that stretch to your left thigh, I'm enjoying it with you. Take another breath in my body, not you, since I live over here. Take another deep breath. And again. One more time. And then as you breathe out, hands together, down in front of heart. Breathe again, reach up to the sky. And then breathe out, open arms, release, hands down. Onto the earth or onto blocks, it's up to you. Back, toes tuck under, we lift our high lunge. And then lifting hips up, lengthening front leg. So your back heel lifts high and your hips lift high. And it's like your whole body's being jacked up with your legs. Not jacked up, messed up, but jacked up like lifting a car. Take a breath. And again. Two more. One more. And then as you breathe out, bend your front knee. And as you breathe in, step back with your front foot into Chaturanga. And now we do traditional vinyasa. You can do this on your block, or you can do it on the earth. 
You could do knees and chest, or you can come forward and lower in one single movement and lower plank. Open into Bhujangasana or Cobra Pose, and then back. Adho Mukha, Savanna. Hang out there. Feel free to close your eyes for a moment. Just check in, noticing how these movements are affecting your body. My hope is that you're feeling that movement of prana. Maybe you've got a little heat moving, a little agni. Take another breath. And again. Inhaling, let's look up at our hands and exhaling. You can step or walk up to the front, coming into Uttanasana, up at the front edge of your mat. Put your palms on your shins, lift your spine. Gaze forward and then exhale, lift your hips and forward fold. And inhaling with big open arms, you reach to the sky. Hands touch overhead, spin down to our hearts we go. And then breathe again, big open arms up to the sky. Exhale down to heart. Deep breath up to the sky. Exhale down to heart. And one more deep breath up to the sky. And exhale down to your heart. All right, inhaling, reaching all the way up to the sky. Exhaling, open arms, lift your hips, hinge and fold forward. Okay, so your blocks are still nearby, right? Bless you. You're gonna move your blocks and put them right um, underneath where your feet were a moment ago, and then you're gonna step up on your blocks. So now you're in forward fold on top of your blocks. We're keeping them at level one so that we're relatively safe. There's not that far for you to fall. And breathing out, you'll bend your knees and you're going to bring your hands to the edges of the block. I know you can't get your hands under the block, so you're just going to come to the edges. Can you all see that? No. <laughs> I had a feeling, that's why I asked. Okay, so we have our hand, we have our knees bent. We're bringing our hands down to the edges of the block. You can wrap around and hold however you want to. And then pull your chest forward and up. Gaze forward like cow pose. And then lift your hips. Try to keep your cow in your upper body as you lift and lengthen your legs. Take a deep breath. Chest forward, shoulders backwards. Gaze forward. If you get a kink in your neck, just relax into a neutral neck. If you're able to keep that lift, hold that lift, and keep trying to lift your hips, lengthening through the backs of your legs as your hands hold on to the edges of the block. Take another breath. And again. And one more. And then as you breathe out, bend your knees. Use your hands for a little help to step off the block. And then go ahead and move them off to the side. And step forward again in your fold. Inhaling, your palms come up to your chin. You look forward and exhale, knees bend and hands come down. And then inhale all the way back, right leg. Hands on the earth or hands on block. Lift your hips high again. Lengthening through your back body. Take a deep inhale, lift up on the fingertips. Bring your gaze forward, your shoulders back. Pull your chest forward, but keep your hips lifting high. Don't let them move fast. Take another breath. And again. And then either stay with right fingertips on the earth, or you can put right hand on a block at whatever height serves you, and take your left arm to the left. And then as you breathe in, lift from this position. Keep your chest moving forward and upwards, turning your gaze up to the ceiling. And think about creating that cow posture in your chest as you retain this posture You're hit in your low body, your hips lifting up high. And your spine lengthening. Take another breath there. Feel your back heel really high, your hips lifting high. Take one more. And then exhaling, bend your front knee and bring your left hand down. You can move your block out of the way. 
And then step back with your left foot in to tuck our own. And again, you can use your blocks or you can just have your hands on the earth and if you're vinyasa, use your variation. Cobra or upward dog is up to you. And then move it on back. Adho Mukha Svadhana. Deep breaths in. Long breaths out. Take another. Exhaling and again. One more time. Inhaling, look forward and up at your hands. Exhaling, step or walk to the front. Come into Uttanasana. All right, so since we're down here, let's set up the second version of that forward fold. If you have a strap, you're gonna grab a strap and place it on the earth in front of your feet. You can step your feet back so that you're in a position to put the block then over the strap. This also works really well with a TheraBand or an exercise band if you have one of those. You have to hold onto the strap without messing up your block and step onto the block. And then once you've got that whole thing set up, you're gonna walk your hands down, 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 down as far as you can go. And of course, I'm a fan of that cowboy bind. So you're welcome to bind. Bend your knees as necessary in order to get your hands as close to the ground as possible. And then again, you're gonna cow pose in upper body, shoulders back, looking forward, and then try and lift your hips. And now you get a different experience. Before you were holding and you were pulling downward. Now with a strap bound around your hands, you don't have to hold as much. You get to lift and pull. And I'm hoping that you're feeling that movement in your shoulders and you're feeling that movement through the backs of your legs. And take another breath. Exhaling, breathe again. Lifting chest, lifting gaze, take another. Two more times, dreaming about the day that your hamstrings and calves are actually open enough for you to get your legs long. One more breath. And then bend your knees, release your hands. Inhale, lengthen legs, palms on shins, extend, spine forward. Exhale, fold down and then deep breath, open arms, big high rise. For those of us that wish we were five foot more than three, here we go. <laughs> and then hands together down in front of heart. Inhale again, reach to the sky. Exhale down to heart. And another breath up to the sky. And down to heart. Sorry, right, let's step off these blocks because this is dangerous. And go ahead and move the box out of the way and your strap out of the way. <clears throat> and standing tall, back in Tadasana. Deep breath, reaching to the sky. Exhaling down to heart. Take another breath upward to the sky. Down to heart. And one more time. Urdhvasana. And as you exhale with open arms, hips, lift, we hinge and fold forward. Inhaling, palms on shins, we look forward. And exhaling, knees bend, hands through, stepping all the way back, this time with left foot. I'm just gonna rotate around so you can keep an eye on you. High lunge stance. Coming up on fingertips. Lift your hips high, lengthening your front leg. Looking for that lift in your hips, your left heel lifting high, and trying to make everything move straight upward, not backward, but upward. Breathe there. Exhaling, take another. And again, feel that cow posturing in your upper body, shoulders back, gaze forward, breathe again. Exhaling, lift your hips a little higher, and then take your block. Put it underneath your left hand or stay on your left fingertips. Right arm to the right and inhaling, twist and open. Deep breath. Exhale. So it's this little play on rotated triangle pose that we're doing here with the focus less on upper body or, or I guess there's less effort in upper body because we're putting so much effort in low body. And everything's rising. We're trying to lift and pull all of the winds upward through our body. Remember, we've got those 
winds in our arms, winds in our legs, those prana vayu. Take another breath. And again, lift with your hips. And as you exhale, let right hand come down. Move the block out of the way if you're using one. Bending your front knee and then inhale, step back. Chop their anga again. And it's up to you. You can do knees and chest, lowered planks, chaturanga dandasana. Ujjangasana or Adho Mukha Svanasana. Uh, sorry, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. And then exhaling, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale. Exhale, take another breath. Breathe out in another. And again. Inhaling, let's pull our bodies forward and exhale, come up and over toes, back into table pose and hold there in your table. Take a deep inhale and let out a long exhale. All right, so now that we've created all this space and openness in our legs and our hips, let's see if we can't move that prana a little higher in our bodies. So if you're using a blanket, you're gonna open it up and spread it wide across your mat. So it's going to stick out beyond the edges of your mat. Come down onto your belly. Right knee slides along the earth up the side, your side body. So we've got our half frog posture going on here. Elbows come in right underneath shoulders. Forearms parallel, so it's like a sphinxy frog. Would be a nice little statue, a little froggy sphinx posture. Chest forward, shoulders back, looking forward. Find your upper body cow again and find your low body cat again. Pushing your hips forward and downward into the earth, lifting your shoulders and chest and gazing upward. Take another breath. Exhaling and again. Inhale another. Exhale. Now we're going to mimic that posture we did just moments ago. Lifting your right elbow, you pivot onto your left forearm so that it comes across with fingers to the right. And first, you're just going to put right hand on right thigh and rotate and twist. So your right hand is actively pushing your right thigh outward and downward, not just downward. we got to go outward, too, to open up all those hip flexors. And then it's up to you. You can stay here because maybe you're getting enough of a postural experience here. Or you can stretch your right arm out and away. Breathe in. So we're mixing poses again. Take another breath. We got sphinx, frog, and then there's like a little bit of kapotasana going on. Breathe again. Exhaling. Take another. Okay, so if you want to like really get funky and pretzel, you bend your left knee and grab your foot. Then you get a quadricep stretch too. Deep breath. Exhaling, take another. Two more times. This pose has no name, but I could make one up if you really want one. One more. And then we'll inhale, release, let left leg extend. Exhale, rotate forward. Put your elbows back on the ground. Sphinx posture and upper body. Elbows wide, hands back. And then let your right leg extend back and come into a relaxed position with head, forehead on hands. <laughs> and breathe here. Long inhales, long exhales. Now, you're just going to lift up into Sphinx. I'm going to rotate around again so that I'm facing you. I'm going to do these variations on the posture. Elbows under shoulders, forearms parallel, fingers forward, spine lengthening, chest lifting. Slide left knee up along your side body, bringing it up into that froggy position. And then pivot on right arm, bringing your fingers around to the left as you lift your left elbow. So you're in this 
funky little pinky frog with a twist. And then if you want left hand to left thigh, press down and rotate here. Pushing your thigh outward and downward. Deep breath. Exhaling, take another. And again. And then in breath, left arm lifts and extends back. Holding there, you're really lifting up to your torso. We're trying to avoid the sinking position. Just like in equestrian, we want to be lifting, rising. And then if you're adding on right knee then to grab for your heel and bring it towards your hip. Big, deep quad stretch. Big, deep quad stretch. You're good. Ah. <laughs> You can always use a strap. If your arm isn't long enough, make it longer, right? Take another breath. Yeah. Exhaling and again. Two more. One more. And as you inhale, extend, releasing right leg, left arm still to the left. Exhale, pivot and turn forward, back into your sphinx with your upper body. Elbows wide, hands stacked with the opposite hand on top. Left leg extends back and far head rest on here. And breathe here. Inhale, exhale. Keep breathing, inhale. Exhale, and again. Now on your next breath out, bring your hands right beneath your shoulders, thumbs pointing in towards sternum. Elbows back, open Bhujanga. Hold there, holding that beautiful cobra pose. Deep breath in. Long breath out and take another. And then lift with your belly and come back into shape. Inhale, exhale, take another breath, exhale. Now because we've done so much opening, we might as well go full on towards our frog. I need two blocks for this posture because there's no way I'm getting fully into this posture without any tool. Set them beside you. In your, from your table pose, you take your knees as wide as your mat, uh, as wide as your blanket. And you bring the soles of your feet together. Now in a ideal world, we'd have all the tools. We'd have somebody to tie our feet together. We'd have some sandbags holding our feet down. But that stuff is very difficult to do on yourself. So instead, we're gonna use mindfulness, intention. And as you breathe out, your hips move forward. So watch, I'm not going down. I can't go down. I'm going forward with my hips. I'm bringing them forward just like I'm trying to create cows like we did so many times today. And then once your hips are as far forward as they can go and your feet have not popped off the earth, that's when you grab a handy dandy tool and you put a block right underneath the bony part of your pelvic girdle, right under your pubic bone. Not under your belly, under your pubic bone. You can rotate that block to whatever height works for you. And you come down onto forearms. Now you can do a sphinxy pose if you want to. Alternative options include putting a block underneath your head and resting there. Some people are able to bring their elbows out and let their head rest on the ground. Some people can get their chest on the ground. I don't suggest putting a tool underneath your chest because it's uncomfortable. And stay there. Now, as you remain in this posture for the next few breaths, you might find that you're hips and legs release more and more and you can rotate the block that's underneath your pubic bone lower. If you get so low that you start to feel pain or stabbing or ripping or tearing, that's too low, come back up. It's totally okay to withdraw, to hold back. The full expression of the posture doesn't necessarily provide you with the most benefit. Keep breathing, whichever version you've chosen. Keep adjusting as you remain here. Trying to find a position in which your body can relax a little bit more. Of course, there'll still be that hot effort in your feet, keeping the soles of your feet together. Two 
Four more breaths here. Next in breath, no matter which version you've chosen, you're going to come back up onto your palms into that sphinxy type the or uh, oh, up, uh, cobra pose type position. Up dog cobra with wide legs. And then lift your belly, push your hips back. You can let your feet open and big toes come together and then shift back. Moving the block, if you had one out of the way, palms can face up or you can extend your arm forward in traditional bala. And allow yourself to release into this posture. Hips moving back, legs open. Take another breath. And again. Inhale, lift your spine, bring your hands back, adjust, and bring your knees back beneath your hips, and table pose. Deep breath in, exhale, and in. All right, take your feet off to one side, come back and sit down, and take your blanket, if you're using one, out of the way, and shift onto your back. We're going to finish our practice today with a um, unsupported fist. We're going to do a traditional style Matse Asana. And so as you breathe out with knees bent and feet on the ground, rock over to one side, palms down, tuck that uh, arm that's exposed underneath, and then rock to the other side, tuck that arm underneath. So our gluteals, our butt rests on our wrists. Our palms are down, our elbows are scooching towards our spine, our upper arms are being squeezed beneath our back body, and your chest is lifted. As you breathe in, extend each leg long, lengthening the mount in front of you. Next inhale, you're going to lift onto your palms and elbows. So your hands and your elbows hold you, and you lift your chest really high so that you're raising up your torso your head, your shoulders, your chest, all off the earth. Then lift your chin to the ceiling like our cow and keep tilting it upwards and backwards, lowering down until the top of your head kisses the ground. Your upper chest is in cow pose. Your head is in cow pose. Your shoulders are in cow pose. Breathe there. Deep inhales, long exhales. Take another and feel that movement of prana. Think about guna, the quality of energy around you, right? Nature. Think about dosha, your own balance of energy within you. And think about how you're interacting with the energies around you. How can you be a little more discerning how can you focus your mind a little bit more upon that which you know that which you need to learn and that creativity within you that benefits all coming back to om remembering that it's almost like we should be saying wa drawing from inward becoming aware of our own imbalances our own discrimination, our own discernment, and then ah, expressing things out with me. On your next inhale, press into your palms and elbows again and just lay, um, lift your head slightly, lengthen your arms and let the back, the back of your head come to the earth. Bend your knees, place your feet on the ground, and again, rock left to right, releasing your arms Extending them out to the sides with palms upwards. 
And then if you'd like, you can keep doing that windshield wiper. Swinging your knees side to side. And just checking in. Your arms might feel a little tingly after being squished underneath you. Take another breath. And again. All right, now's the time to set up for our corpse pose. Rolling to one side if you're gonna use some tools. And then rising through that side, come up to sit. Okay, so our practice today focused on back of leg opening. We got some really beautiful twists that move from our hips. And then that big shoulder and chest opening. So if you want to, um, a lumbar roll. So creating a cannoli roll and then putting it perpendicular to your spine at your low back might feel really good. Traditional cannoli roll is always acceptable. Legs up the wall, absolutely fabulous because we want to continue to have that flow of prana upward, that movement of vayu, and then also it creates this calming experience. You choose the version of corpse that serves you today. I'm going to set up my seat. And so once you're settled in and you've found a posture that you are going to enjoy and find ease within, take a couple breaths, deep full inhales and exhales. And then we'll begin our sound vibration so that we can transition from Hatha to Raja. Begin with a long exhale. Inhale fully. Let out a long exhale. And then our next deep breath is for Om. So inhale fully. Ah. Inhale is for I'm. I'm. One more for I'm. Envision in your mind, Shushum Nanadi, that central pathway of energy. And on your next inhale, lift your pelvic floor and imagine pulling breath and prana upward as you fill belly, chest, and throat. Hold your pelvic floor up and your breath in. Release your pelvic floor and as you exhale from throat, chest, belly, bring chin to throat and feel that prana moving within your middle body. Inhale again, lift with pelvic floor and fill up belly, chest, throat, feel your breath rise up and prana rise high. Release your pelvic floor empty from throat, from chest, from belly, your chin moves to throat, hold your breath out and feel that vibration of prana within. Inhale again, lift pelvic floor, fill up belly, chest, the road, hold your breath up and in. And release pelvic floor, empty throat, empty chest, empty belly, hold your breath out, chin to chest, to throat. Natural in breath, natural out breath. Andaranga Chitak, bring your palms together, begin to create heat. If you rub your palms actively together, warming them. Once your hands feel warm, turn your palms to your eyes, fingers over forehead, and in that darkness, turn your attention inward. Look for the light, the spark within you, your own spirit, your soul, your atma. 
and keeping your attention inward, your arms cross over palms to opposite shoulders. And then spread your arms apart, backs of hands to the earth, keeping your attention inward. Detach from your body. And turn towards your own self. Mahurna Sarvati Prajetayati Ketuna Yo Vishva Virajati Move from within, outward, shifting your awareness and your perspective from yourself to your surroundings. Listening for the sound of your breath, consciously begin to exhale and inhale more fully and completely. As you breathe, Feel each breath expand your torso and contract it. As each breath grows deeper and fuller, let your attention move outward through your body from torso to arms to legs to hands and feet. And begin to wiggle your fingers, your toes, Open and close your hands, point and flex your feet. Shift your wrists and ankles and turn your head from side to side. And then with a deep breath in, begin to stretch and extend your arms and your legs, lengthening 
from toes to fingers and tail to crown. And then breathing out, your knees bend and your feet come to the earth. And it's up to you. You can keep your feet on the ground or bring your legs towards your chest, take your hands to the backs of your thighs. For a moment, pause, look within yourself once more and honor peace, contentment, divinity. And breathing out, roll to your right side. Your hands become a pillow for your head and as you lie there, drain away the things you do not need, letting go of ignorance, impurities, and distractions. And use your hands for a little help, lift through your side body, and then come up to a seated cross-legged position. Your palms touch, and lifting your hands, point your thumbs to the center of your chest, create Anjali Mudra, our attitude of offering. And offer peace for yourself. Om Shanti. For others, Om Shanti. And throughout the multiverse, Om Shanti. I thank you for the honor of sharing the practice and the mirrors provided when we do so. Namaste.